Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better ask. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like the Capitan, giving them all. Like the million bucks, but things in this cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 everybody you are listening to the voice come on dig me now one and only steve harvey got a radio show ain't god been good to me but then again ain't he been good to you too though i mean really man think of all the blessings god has given you you know what that's some good news today though y'all in the face of uh the world being the way it is the the evilness that's out there it just it just seems like that's all that's on the news sometimes you know you we got we got news of parents not really standing up being parents. We got news stories of children turning on their parents. You got you got everything. The economy, you got places you thought used to be beautiful places to go. Now they got travel alerts. It's, it's just it's all it's, it's it's all over. But the good news is there's something that you can have in this relationship with God that gives you a way to deal with it all. And I'm not saying that it'll, it'll protect you from every single thing out there that's happening because some things are going to happen to you. You're going to be in an accident from time to time. You're going to make a mistake and fall down from time to time. But man, wouldn't it be incredible to new, for, for you if you understood that you had some insurance in all of this, that no matter what happened to you, you know, you were covered you know, look, insurance companies, as good as they are, you know, like our friends at State Farm or any other uh, insurance company, you know, they do they do some amazing things. Insurance is a really, really good thing to happen in the event that something happens to you. You know, you may not want to pay the premium, but guess what? In the event that something happens to you, that insurance is absolutely critical. Well, but guess what? They cover certain things. You could get life insurance. You can get auto insurance, you can get accident insurance, you can get health insurance. There is nothing that you can buy to safeguard you against life's decisions. You know, if you make a mistake, if you cheat, if you lie, if you if you fall down and you can't seem to get it together and you make a crazy decision about how you're going to go about securing an income, there, there are there are no policies you can buy for that. You can't buy a policy if you stop being the man you're supposed to be and, 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 and give up on your children. You can't buy a policy if something happens as a mother and all of a sudden you're not the mother you're supposed to be. But there is some insurance coverage out there for you. And that relationship that you form with God, that friendship that you form with him, 
that that alliance that you that that partnership that that prayer that you put in all the time there is an insurance policy that you have taken out when you form a relationship with your heavenly father when you form a friendship when you form a bond that protects you that protects you when these things happen in the event that they happen now here's the great thing about prayer Prayer can head off some stuff from happening. It really, really can. Prayer can prevent some things from happening. You know, I'll give you an example in my life. Okay, here we go. Because see, see, it's the best way for me to do it. Because see, I, what I don't like to do is, is talk to people without letting them know, hey, look, I'm in this hole with you. I feel where you're at. Okay, here we go. I was making some decisions a few years ago. Because what I thought I was doing was counterbalancing something that was happening in my life. You know, I thought that since I wasn't happy or well, for whatever the reason I thought I wasn't happy, if if I, as wrong as I am, wanted to blame somebody else for my unhappiness, that, that's, that's really, if, if, if I make a bad decision because I'm thinking I'm unhappy with somebody, well, hold, hold, hold upon, two wrongs don't make a right. And I make a decision to do something wrong. And now the consequences come when I do something wrong. See, then the, I already know as an intelligent thinking man, as most of you are, that when you do something wrong, that, you know, there is a consequence for that. I teach that to my sons. When you do something wrong, there is a consequence. So as an adult, I fully understood the consequence. And so what I was doing was I was making some decisions that was causing some consequences in my life that was delaying my happiness, delaying my progress, causing my business not to go the way it could go, so forth and so on. Well, what I started doing was I took out this insurance policy called prayer and I started putting it in my mix on a daily basis. And then I started putting it in my mix, you know, two, three times a day. And then I found myself using it all the time. And then I really started putting it in when, when I didn't need any help, when I wasn't in trouble, I started putting insurance in. I started making deposits into the bank. I started paying my premiums down. And prayer is like a premium. You just pay into it. Then when situations started coming up now, it that prayer that I had put in, that in those premiums I had paid, it started preventing me from making the decisions I was making in the past. Thus, I didn't have to suffer the consequences Thus, my businesses didn't have to be delayed in its progress because I had put some payments on some premiums. I had taken out an insurance policy with my life, my real life. I'm talking about your life where you make your day-to-day -day decisions in. I'm not talking about, see, life insurance is only good if you die. God has a policy that's available, that's available for you while you living. See, in order for an insurance policy to pay, something bad got to happen. Now, there may be some others out there I don't know nothing about, but all the ones I got, my car insurance, they only come into play if I have an accident. I have an accident insurance policy where if something happens to me, I got accident. I got I got my voice is covered in case something happened to that. I, I got that, but, but I got to not be able to talk to cash that one. You understand? I'm everything. My I got homeowners insurance. Don't nothing show up on my homeowners insurance unless it's a flood, a fire, a theft. Something bad got to happen for my insurance to even make sense. When you take out the policy with your with your heavenly Father, when you pay the premiums of prayer, and that's all it costs, man. It ain't you ain't got to have no money for this policy. I put into the policy. It pays me dividends and benefits for living. Ain't nothing got to go wrong for me to cash in on this policy. I use this policy for good things. I, I'll give you an example. I use this policy to ask God to watch over my family when I travel. Make the decisions to pay your premiums in prayer Talk to your heavenly father, get you some insurance in your life. And when you have little things like that, keep on stepping, man. God loves you, man. Man, I sure hope you talk to God today because guess what? He sure would like to hear from you. That's for sure.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, feeling his presence, thanking him for it, being grateful, showing gratitude, understanding that this is not a given, that this is a blessing, this is a present from God. Yeah, it's a gift, man, to be here. It really is, man. Uh, you know, in my alone time recently, I have found that I've gotten spiritually closer to God. I was, you know, struggling with this alone time I was having for a minute, but it's brought me closer, and I really appreciate that. And so when my girl do get home, it's going to be nice, but I have really taken advantage of this alone time and learned a lot more things that I needed to know. And the number one thing I needed to know to put your trust in God's timing and his alone and quit worrying about people. I have a new enemy and I'm actually handling my new enemy in a different way. I'm not even thinking about no form of retaliation. Ain't no when I see him or uh-uh. No, I'm gonna. I've, I've learned the older I got, leave it alone, let them have it. Cause what? God didn't took care of me this far. He gonna take care of me the rest of the way. And the scripture that has affected me the most lately is, "Touch not my anointing." That has turned out to be so true for me. Now listen to me. I'm not saying I'm more anointed than anybody else. Cause Lord, no, I'm not. But I am one of them. Now, what you think of me personally, I don't really care. But what he think about me is critically important. And so far, he seems to be okay with me. So touch not my anointing. Be careful how you handle me. Watch yourself. Be very careful. That's all I got to say. Steve <laughs> Harvey Morning Show. I might not even ask Junior what he wants this morning. Because I'm already on one. Fairly strawberry. Carla for real. Mississippi Monica. Him. Junior. And the legend that is nephew yeah. talking. Junior anyway. Yeah, go ahead, huh? <laughs> Not anyway. You know, man, it. it's just so true, man. I just yeah. I really have come to that, man. It's amazing. I wish I had gotten to this point a lot earlier. I could have saved myself a lot of uh unnecessary grief. You know, retaliating, getting back at you. Wait till I see you. Run up on you. Run him down. Find yeah. him. All this here. Oh, man, come on. You're done with all of now, that? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm done. Because you know what? Wow. My favorite scripture was and still is Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But what I had to learn was it didn't mean what no weapons going to be formed. They're just not going to prosper. Anytime you make a decision, y'all, to do better, to improve your life, to, 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 to make a step forward, you are going to be presented with the opposition because the devil's job is to rob you of your destiny. So the devil, all he going to do is get his imps to come at you to distract you. Huh, what? They going to form the weapons. You just got to understand they ain't going to prosper. So congratulations to me yes. for finally understanding that. Amen. As old Amen. as I am. Sorry it took so long, Lord. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Steve. Uh, good sermon this morning. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we're going to hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. Nephew, what you got? Uh, this right here, Shirley, is you hit my car. You hit my car. <laughs> I'm the only face. light blue Camry in the parking lot right, right. now. <laughs> right now. You can put this on T-shirts right here. You're talking about the cross high blankety yes. blanket across the house. <laughs> oh, y'all wasting yeah. Raymond noodles all over the place. <laughs> Straight but up. <laughs> this is what I want y'all to look for. Listen to listen for this when you listen to the prank. <sighs> <laughs> Listen for me to do that and then her right behind it. <laughs> <laughs> you hit my car. Let's go, cat dog. So you waste that and have Raymond noodles all over the place. Hello? I'm trying to speak to Adele. This is she. Do you live in apartment number 78? Uh, that depends on who asking. My name is Herman Wells. I live in building three, apartment 105. Do you live in apartment number 78? What you want with where I live? Look, ma'am, do you drive a Camry, a Toyota Camry, a light blue one? Yes. 
All right. Your next door neighbor then told me that you ran into my car. I got a Benz, a black one, a 2005 C240. Now, I got light blue scratches on uh, my... Wait, wait, wait. My neighbor told you what? Your neighbor, uh, matter of fact, his name is uh, Brian Kendall. I you talked mean to... the cross-eyed mother that live across the hall? The what? The cross-eyed mother that live across the hall told you what? Man, listen. All I know is he say he live in apartment 80. He live next door to you. You live in a supposedly apartment 78 right here in Cambridge Court Apartments. Now, all I'm saying is he told me your car, is the which is the light blue car, hit my, backed into my car. Now, I ain't trying to create no problem, but somebody got to fix my car. Now, I got light blue scratches on my bins. Uh, last I checked, my light blue camera wasn't the only light blue camera they made. Ma'am, you the only light you the only light blue car in the parking lot. Ain't no even I'm light... the only light blue car in the parking lot right now. I ain't gonna say I've been the only light blue car in the damn parking lot. <sighs> Ma'am, I'm not I'm... <sighs> Look, and I'm in the middle of watching T. What can I do for you? What you mean what can you do for me? You didn't hit my car. I ain't, ain't touch your damn car. Is you got some cameras out in this parking lot that saw me hit your car? No, I don't have no cameras, but at well, least... Well, then, uh, I believe this conversation is over, and I don't give a damn what the cross-eyed man across the hall told you. Look, let me tell you something. You didn't hit my car, now you going to oh, sit up and act like you ain't... Hold on, hold on, hold on, player. Uh, is you yelling at me? I'm and not yelling at you, but you didn't hit my car. You the I only light... I touch your damn Man, car. Man, you the only Man, light blue car in the parking lot. I'm the only light blue car in the parking lot now. And as a matter of fact, my car ain't even in the parking lot. My sister borrowed my car to go to the store. Well, is it possible that your sister is the one that hit my car? No. Nah. What? Okay, is, is your sister, when is she coming back? Maybe she hit my car and didn't tell you she hit my car. No, she ain't hit your car. She ain't hit your car because she would have told me she hit your goddamn car. Look, uh, I said ain't nobody hit your damn car. My car ain't got no damn scratches on it. What you ain't gonna so be doing is sitting here no cussing at me though. It, then you I don't give a f what kind of scratches you got on your car, but I can't do a damn thing about it. And even if you did, let me just be clear. I ain't got no insurance no way. So I can't do nothing for you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me tell you something. You it ain't got to tell me sh You ain't got to tell me a f thing. And as far as I'm concerned, this m conversation is over. Wait a minute. Let me ask you. Half a hung up. Call her back. Mister, you act like I ain't got You're call You're going to pay for these scratches on my car. I got $3,500 worth of scratches thing. on my car. And I don't you... give a fuck about no. You had them scratches on your car already. I... And you ain't finna use me as no an excuse to get you no new paint. I though. ain't had no scratches already on my car. Oh, yeah, I... you had them. Oh, yeah, you had them. No, I did oh, that's not. That's what I'm going to tell him. Insurance adjuster if he come over here. Nah, because you going to be using your insurance. I done already told you I ain't got no. Look, don't make me come over to your apartment number uh, 78. I'm standing in the door. I'm on my way to the door now. I'm standing in the door. Come on. Come on. Look, I got $3,500 worth of scratches on my car that you need to pay for. You the you only, you the my only car light blue. My ain't even worth $3,500, so you already doing better than me. What? 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 Look, I done already told you. I'm tired of talking to you. I'm watching TV, and you ain't got shit else to talk to me about. I, I need to talk to you, you about this car. Lady, I'm listen. I your car. I got 35. I didn't touch I your car. My car ain't bumped up against your car. I ain't even parked next to no BMWs lately. It's a Benz. What a the C hell ever? It's a Benz C240, a black. I don't give a damn if it's a, a Benz 777. I can't help you. They don't make a seven seven. I don't La give a damn. Lady, look, you know what? Can I say something to you? No, you can't say a d You know what you can say to me? You can say bye. I just want to say one more thing to you. One more thing. I'm going to give you one more mo thing. Go ahead on. All I want to say is, this nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, your sister Robin out of D.C. put me oh, up to... Oh, that is going to make me... You know what? I don't even have y'all show. I listen to the show on the internet. And this bitch, oh, you wait till I talk to her ass. All right, Mr. Dale, but listen, what, before you go, can you tell me, what is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, nephew Tommy.
You knew you didn't run into nobody, I huh? knew damn well I ain't hit nobody because I be trying to park my stuff out there far so won't nobody hit me, you know? Uh, all right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Classic. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> when you said Mercedes uh, and BMW, whatever. <laughs> I mean, you already doing better than me. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> classic. Straight up classic. The nephew is coming to Dallas, baby. Dallas, uh, Father's Day weekend. That is June 15th at the Majestic. That is nephew Tommy's house party, comedy jam. It's a party. It's comedy all wrapped up in one. And we got my man. We got Tony Roberts with him. We got Dominique in the building. And tickets are on sale right now. And they are selling pretty doggone good. I feel good about myself. I really do. I feel all right, good. nephew. <laughs> Congratulations for feeling good about yourself. Coming up next, it is the CLO, uh, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, the first debate between President Biden and Donald Trump is set for June 27. A new survey reveals which celebrity uh, people want as their president. Hmm, should I tell you now? It's Denzel Washington. <laughs> yes, he's got our vote. Yes. And the news, uh huh. <laughs> and the news that Red Lobster restaurants are closing is trending. Bye bye, Cheddar Bay biscuits. Uh, this is all coming up at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO. All right, Anne in South Haven says, "My husband and I were at the movies, and the cashier dated our son in high school. She called me Mrs. Thomas, but she said hi, Tony, to my husband." He didn't correct her. He said it's no big deal. Why did he allow it? Is this inappropriate? Um, I mean, if she dated the son, the son. To, mm -hmm. in high school, and they don't, why would he? He can't correct people. He he can't correct people. When you run up into people that's rude, you can't come stop and correct everybody. Why does bother you? <laughs> The familiarity, I think. Hey, well, Tony. You know, <laughs> but you correct people when they say, hey, mm -hmm. Steve. Yeah. Don't you? All the time. I got time for it. No, oh, okay. Oh, you do? I got time. Oh, no, it's based on I your schedule? Time, <laughs> I, got, I got time for, for what I have. You know what I'm saying? If you, if, you, if you young, young, and you call me Steve, I will stop you and say, it's Mr. Hart. That's but, what she Well, that's all the wife taught you wants. no matter. But if your mom ain't talking, but see, now, I understand that, but everybody ain't that way. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't write in about it. Why didn't he correct her? I don't know. Because it bothered I don't know. Corrected her. her, the wife. Uh, Mr. Such and Such. It bothered her. Yeah, yeah, you know. Hey, Tony. You know, like, why are you so familiar uh, with my me. husband? It's, it's Mr. Hayes. Yeah, <laughs> she could have yeah. done Yeah, it. she yeah. could have definitely. Hell done. wrong with you. We used to get knocked out for that. You mess around what? and don't put a mist in front of what? something. What? Mr. or Mrs.? I, still, right, I still do that to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. All right, moving and on. I, requ I require it of all employees. You okay. have to call me Mr. Harvey. So you I, I don't allow that. I don't care. Damn if we had Family Feud and all this here. No, <laughs> if I pay you, I'm Mr. Harvey. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, let me start incorporating that with my people. I'll tell what you right mean? now, you could Steve my ass. <laughs> <laughs> got dogs. Then it got no. deep. Not no. first. No. You said, don't worry well, about yeah. it. Nah. But that's, that's, all, that's, the <laughs> but that's all the white one. But that's all the white one. I'm turning these corners, waking up every morning doing these radio shows, yeah. and in that, a portion of this money that I make, I give to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm holding up, partner. <laughs> Well, that's all the wife wants in this question, in this little scenario, Steve. Oh, I'm talking about employees. She, <laughs> she wants her respect. She works. She tell tickets down at the movie. <laughs> but don't we call them? I just use it as a personal me. moment to vent, yeah. though. So I it's don't really same. care about the question. <laughs> it's the same the thing. Question. Yes, you do. Clearly, Somebody you about do. Somebody must have called you Steve, then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just touched your soul. <laughs> all right, moving on to Tess oh, in Columbus. You know what? <laughs> uh-huh. No, no, uh -huh. go ahead. Go ahead. I don't need Tess in Columbus uh, writes, My boyfriend cheated on me, and he blamed it on the eclipse. 
Uh, <laughs> I thought he was joking. On, I thought he was joking, but he was very serious. I'm more worried about him believing in strange phenomena than him cheating. Should I encourage him to go talk to someone? Whoa. <laughs> Lady, if you believe that, <laughs> if you let that one go, uh, you in for a whole plethora of fresh, what? innovative lies. Yeah, the eclipse lie. Yeah. Uh, that's, I know that ain't a good one. Right. <laughs> Hmm. I specialize in quick laugh. <laughs> yes, you do, sir. <laughs> and I'm, that's not fit to be here. Now, the only, so. only reason I would use the Eclipse in having an affair was, baby, I didn't have my glasses on. <laughs> like sun, and it burned out my redness. And I thought Come on. <laughs> you thought the, the mistress was you? Is that what you said? <laughs> so, I couldn't see no more. <laughs> This is burn up Good, my one, Steve. Good one, Good uh, one. Good one, Steve. And then I look, I look dead at her and go, "Darlene, I'm sorry." She said, "My name is Sherry. See that? I'm blind." I you, Darlene. <laughs> so she's the one that needs to go and talk to someone, not her man. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on to Leslie in Hartford. Leslie says a female DM'd me to tell me she had sex with my husband. I didn't tell my husband. Instead, I showed him the girl's IG page and told him I was going to lunch with her. He didn't flinch. He said, cool, and kept it moving. Is this proof she is lying? Hmm. Well, that's what you're trying to figure out. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what? Like, he didn't know, flinch. Just, I, don't, I don't understand. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? <laughs> what you going to lunch with her for? <laughs> Okay, cool. Y'all going to lunch together? Cool. Mm-hmm. This is Have a good time. This is lying. Yeah. Have a good no. time. Go on, go to lunch. Mm. Waste waste your time. See, to the woman that DM'd her. Right. Every, everything a man do ain't a lie. Mm. But see, y'all so quick. Mm. Y'all so quick to want to believe your man ain't nothing. That's why you always end up with one that ain't nothing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Your belief attracts to you what you believe in. Mm-hmm. If you believe all men are dogs, you finna meet all of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because you have to verify your thought process. Have you ever thought that the woman could be tricked? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so how should she deal with this? Because the woman did DM her and said she was going, she had sex with her husband. So what should she have done instead of playing the tricky like she did with her husband. All you do is ask your husband. Mm-hmm. Immediately. <laughs> and I don't know no woman that didn't, that wouldn't. Right, exactly. <laughs> but so it was fast. a slick thing you did and went, hey, me and this lady right here, we fire. going to lunch. It's all right, cool. Fire. Have a good time. If he'd have gave you the same answer if you'd have asked him if he'd have been. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Tommy. Same Tommy. Same smooth, man. Same <laughs> answer. Stay in pocket. What'd you say, Steve? <laughs> wasn't me. That same smooth no, answer. No, that show wasn't me. Flinch. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. <sighs> All right. Uh, la- last one. Felix in Pine Bluff says, I'm 39. My wife is 45. Our birthdays are a week apart. We usually celebrate together, but this is my big 4-0, and I want my own party. She says, no one knows I'm younger than she is. Would it be wrong to plan a party for my 40th anyway? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It would? I really? mean, look, man. You gonna play at a party anyway and your wife ain't gonna be there? You stupid. <laughs> now, how you think that's gonna work out? <laughs> how do you think that's gonna work? I'm gonna play in this party with you or without you. But then are you gonna invite her, son? This ain't worth it. Mm-mm. This ain't worth it. It's your big 4-0. Just have it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we will have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, it has been set. Both President Biden and Donald Trump have accepted an invitation from CNN to debate on June 27th in Atlanta. Biden posted on X, quote, I've received and accepted an invitation from at CNN for a debate on June 27th. Over to you, Donald. As you said, anywhere, anytime, any place. 
Okay, so Trump responded to CNN saying the answer is yes, I will accept. President Biden and Trump also accepted an invitation from ABC to hold the second debate on September 10th. So let's talk about it. The plan was to have two debates ahead of the November 5th presidential election to set the tone for the last few months of the campaign. So there you go. Well, I it's think it's set. a good move for Biden uh, because of the polling numbers, which I think, uh, you know, they're so close. Yeah, you know, I, think, I just think, I just think it's a good thing for Biden. Uh, Donald Trump's not a he's not a, a good debater. Debater. He doesn't. He he rants. He goes off. He makes no valid points. He knows nothing about foreign policy, and he lies continues mm. about <laughs> every bad person. He just not, man. I just yeah. don't. But I don't understand. But what's the crazy part? The craziness in all of this, to me, is just the number of people who are blindly supporting this man. When you know he lied about that election, you know the election wasn't stolen. And, what and every so last much. one of these politicians <laughs> have gotten on board. The thing that make me sick was during the, in, the, during the insurrection, insurrection on January 6th, uh-huh. when uh Finally, Mitch McConnell and uh, the other. Uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah, go ahead. M- McConnell and, and, um, and all, all the Republicans. That's Lindsey it. Graham. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is it. I'm done. This is it. That's the final straw. Enough of this guy. They said that when they was running for their life. Then they found out that them people still vote. All of them have changed their mind. It was a small protest. All these people in jail. Y'all Bill. killed these law officers. Y'all killed these people. Injured them really badly. Yep, and a lot of And now it's just... Yeah. And man, y'all, can, this is hypocrisy at its highest level. This is a sad thing, man. Uh-huh. This country's morally just the other way. We, we it, This country gone, man. And I don't see the turnaround. I don't see it. Well, yeah, we have to register. We have to vote. And uh, while we're talking about this year's presidential election, according to a new survey, Denzel Washington is the celebrity that people would most want to see as our president. Yes. <laughs> Come on, President Bleak. That is big. Yes, that's more better. Make it more better. Yes. yes. <laughs> Come on, Bleak. Yes. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> All right. Here's here's a full list. Okay. Starting at number ten. Uh, this, this is who people want to see as our next president. Mark Cuban, number ten. Number nine, Elon Musk. Number eight, no. Bill what? Gates. Yeah, Elon, Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah, Elon, that's mm-hmm. Donald Trump. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> number eight, Bill Gates. Number seven, Matthew McConaughey. Number six, yes. Oprah Winfrey. Mm-hmm. Number five, George Clooney. Mm-hmm. Number four, Clint Eastwood. Boogie. Number Hell three. Boy, his no. old ass be president. <laughs> out there talking to that damn chair. chair. You remember, that? Yeah. remember that at the Republican convention? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, number three. Any guesses? Any guesses? Number three. Three? Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Wayne Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks, number three. Oh, no, okay. Wayne Brady. He's okay. not on the list. Number two. Steve Harvey. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. You should. You could, you might be able to guess this one though, because he's kind of been toying with the idea of running for office, saying it publicly. The Rock. He's in. A, yes, The Rock. Number yep. two. The yep. Rock. He's been yep. talking about mm-hmm. it. Yep. yep. You're too um, pretty for that. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and number one, as we said, Denzel Washington definitely has our vote for sure. He will have the black woman's vote. Uh-huh. Don't have to worry about nothing. Because <laughs> you know, <laughs> we have been known to change elections. <laughs> Who would you pick out of that list, though? Denzel, it's number Den- one. Yeah, it's number one, Denzel. Come on, y'all, judge. really. <laughs> no, really, what? Bleak. Yes, no. really. Okay. <laughs> no, what, you think right. we're playing <laughs> in your face? No, sir. <laughs> oh, you looking for experience? Yeah. Oh. Trump was in there. Oprah. Oprah's on the list. But yeah, Denzel has my vote for sure. Yeah. In all the ladies of America. (laughs) Anyone you think should be on the list that's not on the list, guys? Steve Harvey. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, you could be president. Background check, though. Yeah. He said that himself.
Yeah. All right. Dom, uh, we got a, a former president got 91 charges. Anybody yeah. worry about you that? Can, I promise you, that back check, background check ain't going to mean nothing. You do. He been got tired <laughs> of him. After weird. about four or five months, he'd be tired. You yeah, talking about your he, six, he, he, your no. six incidents? Mm. <laughs> no, we want Steve Compared Harvey, and we will be your cabinet. <laughs> 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 we be. I, 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 I would. I would love to be in a presidential debate, though. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. You would be good at that. Yeah. You would be All right. Very good. Moving on. Uh, we got to show Red Lobster the restaurant some love, okay? Because. They're preparing to close their restaurants nationwide. So we got to say bye-bye to the Cheddar Bay Biscuits and all of that. Do you guys, have you eaten at Red Lobster? I'm sure you have. Well, the biscuits can't keep you open, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> what about those shrimp specials? You need to be trying to sell more of that damn fish. Quit worrying about them biscuits. <laughs> but everybody the loves the biscuits, it. though. It's the shrimp that brought it down. <laughs> yeah, all right. All them shrimp feasts. Bye bye, Red Lobster. All right, uh, coming up, coming up. Uh, in case you missed it, we have an encore presentation from Junior in celebration of Tommy's birthday tomorrow. Right after this. I didn't ask for that again. Uh, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Please introduce Junior, our resident poet laureate. Don't do it. Don't, don't introduce. Oh, yeah, it's your birthday, man. It's a special day. I didn't birthday. ask for this, though. I didn't know. Okay, well, I know you, you didn't, but it was backed by popular demand, yeah. according to By who? Who they oh. talk to, huh? The who? ladies on the show, they like yeah, laughing at you, it. Tommy. Let's just be real about it. This is from the ladies on the show. We got two they of them on the laugh at me. show. Okay. And they want to laugh at you, dog. And that's what this is. <laughs> I think you should take it personally. I so really that's what this segment is about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's about it's about dragging you down for your birthday. <laughs> oh, wow, you know, I mean, huh? Wow. huh? That's not uplifting. I mean, all, I mean, but... you got two women on this show to produce the show, and how you got in this again? Yeah, it I wasn't because of me. Just and I didn't ask for it, and you didn't ask for it. So how? Why y'all talking about Junior's segment? I don't even like think Junior he asked did. for it. I don't I even think, think he asked. I, I think I think Junior asked for it. I think I Junior asked. and them three ladies it was four against two, Tommy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, and I bet he well, wanted to do it. Do it ladies and gentlemen, J Rap Junior's raggedy ass poems proceed. Okay, well, Tommy, I didn't, I didn't ask for it, Tommy. You know what, man? I've been. Playing. I don't need to look as sad. All this. Don't, don't look sad. Don't look Tommy, sad. I'm not, I'm not gonna do the poem. Come on, until come now. On, come on, here we go. Time. Happy yeah, birthday, yeah. nephew Tommy is the name of the poem. No, 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 no. What you're not no, gonna it's do? Called pitiful is pitiful poem. What it is? Come on. I don't want you doing no pity poem. No, no, <laughs> I'm not doing a pity poem. I promise you. I'm finna give it to you. <laughs> Let's go. Junior. I'm not feeling sorry for him. Did he write a new one? Here maybe, we go. No, uh Here we go. Just hold on. The poem is titled Happy Birthday, Nephew Tommy. Your birthday is tomorrow. So here we go. Ooh. Tommy's birthday is Saturday. So let's give him a hand. Happy birthday, nephew Tommy. Or little man. At your age, everything shouldn't be so frightening. Like how you still scared of germs, blood, and lightning? You always think you handsome and fresh like flowers. I mean to tell you that you take too many damn showers. I got to tell you this and Uncle Steve will agree. You not as cute and you show sure ain't sexy. Happy birthday and this ain't no hate. But we know you either gonna take off or come in late. Happy birthday, Tommy. The end. There you go. That's you, yeah. man. That's pretty much you. That's you. Thank you, Junior. You well, welcome, dog. I, I ladies, y'all sure. happy? I wasn't buying you yeah, nothing. That's what you was thinking. Thrilled. Was doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I all of them poem. smiling. Thrilled. All of them smiling. Good job. Yeah. So, that's so ungrateful, Tommy. You went lying, huh? Tommy. He done wrote you a birthday poem. Yeah. Ungrateful. Oh, disrespectful ass poem he done wrote. Now y'all gonna come out. I'm ungrateful. No, 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 Ain't you scared of no. lightning? Yes. Ain't you scared of germs? Yeah, no. Oh. Ain't you scared of blood? Frightening. Where's disrespect at then? Terrifying. Ain't little man, was terrifying. Little, man was terrifying. little man was terrifying. Little man was well. That is well. Well, you ain't big man, so. Oh, oh now nice. you're in on it. All right, coming up oh, in 34 just, minutes after. No, you was I'm in sorry. it. You just got in it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't. Hear. Roscoe I Wallace cool. up next. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he is here. Carla, your man Roscoe in the building. Yeah. <laughs> 
What's going on, Roscoe? Good morning, <laughs> sir. I'm a little late right now. I know the pop right here, but I'm I was in the middle of something. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? I, I was talking. I was over four. I told Bruno. Bruno Mall. Oh, what, oh, what is Bruno up to? You know him? Oh, you, oh, oh, you know we're writing another hit. He came, came through, so we'll write another hit. Oh. oh, leave the door open. You wrote that one. Oh, hey, yeah, I wrote that. One. <laughs> <laughs> you know, young ass boys don't know nothing about leaving no damn door. <laughs> Where they get that from? That sound old, didn't it? I'ma <laughs> leave the door open. I'ma leave the door open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that late night creep. Cause they got Alexa now. They ain't got to leave the door open. They tell Alexa open the damn door and pop over. <laughs> <laughs> I'ma call on Alexa. Open the door. See how that sound? I do what they do. Go ahead. Anyway, what's going on with you, Carly? All right, so a couple of things. First of all, we were kind of talking about this with Steve. You heard about Tyrese. He got served papers while performing on yeah, stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, hell yeah. Please you got served papers? What song were you singing? Uh, were you yeah. singing? Oh, I was singing, uh, She's Got Paper. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and here they come. <laughs> and here they come. <laughs> He's got papers on me. And he walked right out there and handed them to me. I wasn't even surprised. <laughs> uh, I stay ready. Oh, yeah, I'm quick. <laughs> I've been quick my whole life. Ain't nothing slow about me. I think you're seven still fan. <laughs> You're doing it, Roscoe, so you can, uh, you sympathize with Tyrese. You've been there. You've been there. All right. Yeah, I don't sympathize with him. I just been there. He should have went on and took them papers. <laughs> see, what they have now and see Tyrese and piss them off. Oh. Now they're going to find it. They're going to run. They're going to really make a fool out of them. She just took the papers. Tyrese don't know how to handle nothing. Really. I don't know what he need to get online, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. We're moving on from Tyree. Okay. Yeah. All right, Memorial Day, the countdown is on. Grilling season, barbecue time. You know how we do backyard, uh -huh. family reunions, summer. All day. Summer. I want you, I'm trying to put together a summer playlist. Summer playlist. What you want? Uh -huh. Al Green, Love and Happiness. Love. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Love and happiness. Come on. Mm. <laughs> Wait a minute. Something going wrong. <laughs> Somebody on the phone. What time is it? Yeah. Three o'clock in the morning. Way too early. Yeah. Wait. Way too early. Come on. <laughs> Something wrong. <laughs> Being in love with someone. Yeah. Mm -mm. Hey. Happiness is we You really, really, I mean, really feel good about somebody. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong. Being in love with someone. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, Ross. Yeah. 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 Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love and happiness. Yeah, that's oh. it right there. That's okay. Good. All right, one more Where before we run out of time. Before I let go, Maze. You make me happy. <laughs> this you can be. Come on now. <laughs> you stood right beside me. Yeah. And I sure ain't gonna forget. I really love you. You should know. <laughs> if he's and I know. want to make sure, girl, <laughs> before I let go, yeah. let go. Drop your Think hand. Think of that, Roscoe. Frank phone call. Bye bye. And what? <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is. 
He wants to be the center of attention. Hmm. Wonder who that's about. We'll get into it and find out in just a few because right now, you know it. Right now, it is time (laughs) for the nephew in today's prank phone call. What you got, (laughs) nephew? Well, you know, you you really done lost your mind when you, uh, Mm. when you go way beyond to do a prank. And on this particular prank, I actually mail some draws to a particular household. I mailed my draw to a particular household. I, I went above and beyond for this your one entire right mind. Mailing your draw. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So this right here is called the gift. The gift. All right. <laughs> this is y'all so I so hold, no, okay, stop. I'm the only one male draw. I'm the only one yes, ever sorry. just send somebody they draw. Pretty much guarantee your mission. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. all you, you are, dog. All yeah. you. you. Ain't nobody went down there to the post office and put their draws in a box and just oh, send them no. all. Ain't nobody oh, done that but me. No. Nope. Okay. You're the only okay. one. Take your badge and wear. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, here it is. The gift. Yeah, dog, if you would. Hello? Hello. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to reach Bree. This is Bree. Hey, Bree, how you doing? Listen, we, um, you and I, we've never met. I wanted to reach out to you, though. Did you, um, did you get, um, did you get a package that I sent to you last week? A package? Who is this? My name is, my name, uh, my name is Jason, um, and I sent you a package. Jason, you know? do I know you? Do, who, who are you? Say again now? How do I know you? You don't know me. I, I'm, I'm just, you know, like, I guess you could say I'm like a secret admirer, and I've been admiring you for quite some time. And, uh, you know, I, I sent you a little something, and, uh, you know, I didn't know if, if you got it or not, if I had the right address, but I wanted to know if you had gotten it. So, uh, you know, this is like my first time reaching out to you. You the sent that package to my house? Uh, yeah, I mean, you got you got a pair, a pair of my underwear with the rose petals all in it? You sent, yeah, you the sent drawers to my house. Who the are you? And how do you know me? My, I, 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 I've been admiring you for a long time. I, mean, I see you, I see you at your job. I see you at your house. You know, at the grocery market when I see you. So what you stalker? What you? Do I know you? We've been. Where do I know you from? You don't know me. You know, you don't know me at all. But you know, I got. You know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you done sent some drawers to my house. Got my husband all, all up in an uproar behind Your them drawers, and you don't even know me. You got a husband? Yeah. I got a husband. Oh, okay. I, didn't, I, I, I mean, hey, I, I no disrespect, Bree. I ain't, I ain't know you had a husband. Hell, you know? you've been watching me, stalking me at my job, in my house. You ought to know that. Hey, I, I, I apologize on that, but you, so you did get it. I want a f- apology. Yeah, I got him. Okay. I mean, what did you think about the gesture, though? I mean, let me, let me explain something to you. My husband got that f- package with my. F- name on it and i've been for the last week going through hell this checking my facebook all of my emails going through my call history on my phone i, I get he wake my up in the middle of the night talking about this and you gonna ask me about are you crazy no i i, I you know I, hey, I, I was just admiring you i thought you know sending a pair of my you underwear some with some drawers to my house i, I, don't I mean even i know just, you, you know. like that i don't even know you like that I mean, you Why don't. You I do know, that? I know, but I, you know, that was my way of like showing you that I admire you, that I'm, I'm, I'm into you. You know, that was just. That. That's some sick. Shit. I don't need no more draws, especially no strange draws. I got draws at the house. I got two sons, a husband. I wash draws every week. I don't need no more draws. You don't do no shit like that. Upset my whole household. Have me damn near in divorce court behind some draws. What I want to know is how the hell. Do you know me? How, how do how did you get my address? Where I work? Where I buy? Well, how do you know me? My phone number? All this? Shit. How the do you know me? I, I, I don't get that. Where did you get my from? I tell you what. Call this number back when my husband get home. You okay, can deal wait, with wait, him. Wait, 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 you can, wait, you can wait, he can wait. get your drawers back. You come meet him in the morning. I have him there. Come by my job. I'm, I'm not trying to have no work. altercations with nobody. I'm not trying to have all of that. You explain this to him and get this off my. Because I didn't have enough of this. Some drawers at my door? Okay, let me ask you this here. Will you send me some of yours? No, the you didn't. Are you not listening to me? Hell no, you can't have none of my drawers. Why don't you ask my husband for them when he sees you in the morning? Why don't you ask him for some of my drawers? 
I thought I thought it would be, you know, like a sign of something something intimate, something from me, you know, uh kinda like a token of uh of where I wanted the relationship to go. I I I, 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 I don't I, even know you. You got my damn near in divorce court behind some damn drawers and I don't even know you. Who the f are you? How who are you? How do you know so much about me? Where did you get my address from? How do you know where I work? How do you, how you get my phone? Who the f are you? Uh, you got like all this information. It seems like you know. you didn't know, you didn't know I have a husband. Matter of fact, so, so what now? lock this number in. You can call back on this number in an hour when that is home so we can get this straight. So you can talk to him. Do that for me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. See, I'm not looking for no altercation. Now, if, 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 if. So you look, you were looking for something, and you still not understand. So obviously that's what you want, because I'm trying to explain to you, you didn't upset my whole household, got my ass over here nerved, and you ain't understanding that. So obviously what you are looking for is an altercation. No, I'm not looking for. I, I'm looking for. I'm looking for some personal time with you. That's what I'm looking for. My personal time is with my husband. What about that? Don't you understand? I. I Will you send me a pair of your underwear? What? I mean, I mean, what? is that asking too much? If you just send me a pair, I'll go away. I send you some shit, all right. Give me your address. Yeah, tell me where to send them. Tell me where to send these drugs right now. Are you going to send them? What's that? Hell yeah, give me the address. You give me the address. As a matter of fact, I hand deliver them right tonight. See, you're trying to create an altercation. Why not just give you a P.O. box? Because, see, you're trying to create an altercation. No, give me your address. You got mine. You got my address. Let me send you some to your address. No, no, that's all right. Look, you know what? Can I, can I say one more thing to you? No, you, you know what? I don't want it. What, what, what the do you have to say to me? Can I say one more thing to you, please? What? What do you want? I just want to tell you who I am. Can I tell you who I am? You know it told me who you are. I want to know how the you know me. Where you get my from? Listen to me real closely. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your sister. Oh. <laughs> Hello? What? <laughs> oh, I'm a Hello? <laughs> what? What the f Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm going to get her. Oh, my God. Hey, look, we started this. Over a week and a half ago, we sent You don't have to tell me. Down. I've been going through hell for a week behind hey, these damn drugs. She told me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, Bree, tell your man to simmer down. It, it was all a prank phone call, baby. Oh, my. He is not going to believe this. Oh, my goodness. He is not going to believe it. Tell me this, Bree. What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> Draws and all. Draws and all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> there you have it. Mm. If you feel strong about something, hey, put it in the mail. Put your draws in the mail. What? <laughs> Love you make you do that, man. You thought that was a good idea. And stupidity does, too. Yes. <laughs> Love make you do that. Okay? <laughs> if you in Dallas and you feel like mailing your drop, well, no. no. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Come on, hang. Come hang out with the nephew at the Majestic Theater, June 15th, Father's Day weekend, Saturday night. I will be there. It will be off the chain. It is Nephew Tommy's house party, comedy, jam. You do not want to miss it. It is straight ignorant from the beginning to the ending, and you're going to get a whole lot of Tommy this time. I promise you that. I put my stamp on it. That's for real. All right. Ain't no half time. Ain't no 10 minutes of time in this time. (laughs) All right. Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter subject, he wants to be the center of attention. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, he wants to be the center of attention. 
Dear Stephen Shirley, I've spoiled my husband and made him the center of my universe, but whatever I do, it's never enough. I'm tired of going to functions with him, and he has to be the center of attention. Recently, at an outdoor concert, we were with a group of our friends, and one of our friends got us the tickets because he is the cousin of one of the artists. My husband had to outdo the guy by knowing all of the dances that the group did back in the day, and I was so ashamed to see him pop-locking in front of everybody. He had to try to outdance everyone. When we go to dinner, he wants to impress everyone by his knowledge of wine, and he will brag to other people near us about his wine collection. Our friends clown him, but they love being around him because he's one big ball of energy. They never know what he will say or what lie he will tell to make himself look impressive. He's also very annoying whenever we have threesomes. Erk! Uh, he's also very annoying when we have threesomes. I can't have fun because he's watching my every move and afterwards he complains about what I did to the others and what I didn't do to him. It's making me want to go back to the way things were before he asked me to have a threesome with him. There's so much other stuff he could be doing instead of trying to have me focus on him the whole time. He'd asked me about swinging and I would love to, but... I don't think he can handle it. How do I deal with my husband's constant need for attention? Excuse me? That's your question? <laughs> I just can't believe that's your first question. Uh, you waited almost till the end of the letter to tell us that he gets on your nerves during threesomes. Uh, I mean, you said a lot of other things, too, but I, I think the most important thing or what you're most concerned about here is uh, the threesomes. I mean, and it's okay what you guys do. And if you don't have a problem with it, why should I? So the issue for you is, is just your constant, your husband's constant need for attention. And why? Uh, I, I don't know why he needs attention like this. Maybe he didn't get enough as a child or something. Maybe he's into threesomes and swinging because the more people in the room, the merrier, as long as all of the attention is on him. And you yourself might enjoy doing these things, but you're married to a man who needs so much attention that, of course, he's not going to want you to be with anyone else but him. He wants you there for him. If he had it his way, Way. He, he wants threesomes and he wants to swing, but he wants it just for himself, not for you. So don't try to enjoy yourself. Don't try to, uh, you know, have any fun in this. Please don't pay any attention to anyone but him at all times. If, if this is what you guys are doing, this is not about you, wifey. It's not about you. Uh, this is about him. You're tired, you say, of his shenanigans anyway. Steve? I'm just, uh, I'm, 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 you know what? <laughs> These what? letters with all these new norms in it, it it's just amazing to me. Hey, I mean, it's lady, what, what's wrong with y'all out here? <laughs> what is wrong with y'all? I mean, really, man, y'all keep sending us these letters with these way out moments, and y'all just discussing them like they just as normal, <laughs> like, like, I mean, you know, like everybody else doing it. Mm -hmm. No, everybody else ain't doing it. Now, it's a lot more people doing it, obviously, because now y'all writing it about it, and it's just the norm. What's and I'm, another new norm that I don't know what you want us to tell you. <laughs> uh, you open the letter with, I've spoiled my husband and made him the center of my universe, but whatever I do, it ain't enough. <laughs> and then according to this letter, you done done damn near everything. <laughs> 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 I don't know what else he wants. <laughs> I sure want to be there when he be talking about this new stuff he finna come up with. <laughs> I'm tired of going to functions with him. He got to be the center of attention. See, the 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 the, the letter was going okay in here, you know. Mm -hmm. We recently y'all went to an outdoor concert. Y'all was with a group of friends, and one of your friends got tickets because he knows somebody in the group, right? But your husband had to outdo the man by knowing all the dances that the group did back in the day. Mm-hmm. Now, man. I was so ashamed to see him pop locking in front of everybody. <laughs> he had to try to outdance everybody. Now, let me stop right here. When you at a concert and you trying to outdance everybody, everyone, mm -hmm. that's some hard ass dancing he did. <laughs> I mean, yes, the so. sweat rings that's under his arms on that silk shirt he wore is uh -huh. <laughs> all the yeah. way down to his belt. <laughs> 
I mean, at this point, he looking trifling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, this dude, dude, you dancing way too hard. Now, you can't even hear the songs right now. Because, uh-uh. you know, uh-uh. you got to focus on your next move. You got to, you know, you got to do the four corners. Then you got to come out with the pearl. Then you got to hit him with the muscle man. <laughs> then you got to hit him with the Earl Flynn. Oh, yes. Then you got to pop lock. <laughs> then you got to come back and hit him with the uh, with the running man. Running man. Then you got to come back and double then work the snake in. Yeah. Then you got to come up out of that, go yeah, right Lord. into the cabbage patch. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to come out the cabbage patch. <laughs> Woo. Then I'm he tired. move up a little bit. He tied now just for extra to show that he hip. He throw in the nay nay. Yeah. That. <laughs> While he stepping back. You better back. know your dance Steve. <laughs> and he was just giving it to him. And right for that, a little Harlem shake. Mm-hmm. This boy is exhausted. Mm-hmm. Harlem shake. All this Hang while on. the group was doing the medley. <laughs> Hang on, Steve. We'll have part two of your response. Coming up at 23 minutes after the hour, today's Strawberry Letter subject, he wants to be the center of attention. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter, the subject, he wants to be the center of attention. Got this man out here that got to be, she tired of him because mm-hmm. he done made her, He she has made him the center of her universe. And he's doing everything she can for him. And she tired of it. Now, Not we're going to get to the real part of this letter. How tired mm-hmm. is she? But <laughs> she can't do nothing with him. Go to company functions. He got to be center of attention. Mm-hmm. They went to an outdoor concert. He up trying to outdance everybody. <laughs> he done put all the dancers together at one time. Uh-huh. He haul them shake, <laughs> doing the Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Come up out of here, cabbage patch, snake, <laughs> running man, the monkey. <laughs> he did the monkey on their ass. Then. Ain't nobody. The monkey was this here. Oh, oh. Yeah, he, he did the monkey. The then he though? did the roach. Killed the roach. He, he just too much. Now the sweat rings under his arms. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Now, and then when you will go out to dinner, he want to impress everybody with his uh, knowledge of wine and brag to other people near us about his yes. wine collection. Yeah. Now, he ain't no rich dude because rich dudes don't do all this here. So mm-hmm. his wine collection really ain't all that. <laughs> you know, Hall in here talking about I got some Manor Chevys. You know. <laughs> so what is that? Huh? You know, for my special occasions, I break out my silver oaks. That's his most expensive <laughs> bottle of wine. That's 60. Mm-hmm. But he and there on there mispronouncing names over there drinking Lord and Taylor. <laughs> Chave Blancé. Oh, you know, <laughs> Lord doing that Chateau. He has the best. Uh-huh. Chateau Blion, you know, yeah. half mm-hmm. pronouncing mm-hmm. French words. He just my ass trying to speak French. Anyway, uh-huh. and the people, uh, your friends clown him, but they love being around him because he's a big ball energy. They'll never know what he'll say or do and, and to make himself look impressive. Now, here the letter. He, then just out of nowhere, he also is very annoying whenever we have threesomes. I can't have fun because he watching my every move and afterwards he complained about what I did to the others and what I didn't do to him. What? What? Exactly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Y'all married. Y'all having threesomes. And what you doing to the other person, he mad because you doing it to the other person and didn't do it to him. Mm-hmm. He needs attention. <laughs> Started pop like that. What? He started pop like Come on. Now, while y'all over there, y'all doing the twosome, he's standing next to the bed doing the snake. <laughs> Wonder why y'all ain't paying attention to him. See me back here? <laughs> all I'm shaking, all this here. Nay, nay. Hello. It's making me want to go back to the way things were before he asked me to have a threesome with him. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> <laughs> There's crazy. so much other stuff he could be doing instead of trying to have me focus on him the whole time. Mm-hmm. Because he could be it. doing something else. Because yeah. there's a threesome in here. Yeah, you could be it. doing something on the top while I'm down here on the bottom. You could be doing something on the bottom while I'm up at the top. Why are you just focusing on me? <laughs> oh, this is crazy. He asked me about swinging, and I would love to. What is y'all doing now? 
<laughs> they're threesome, just threesome, Steve. Just well, threesome. what is swinging? <laughs> he wants to start swinging. How far open do this dough go? <laughs> you already marriage. got extra people in your bedroom. Now he wants to start swinging. Swinging with the- who? <laughs> How many people is swinging? The more the merrier. He likes but I don't think he can handle it. How do I deal with my husband's constant need of attention? First of all, why did you write us? <laughs> How do we know? I've never had this problem. Shirley's never had this problem. No. Most people listening have never had this problem. And you're the first person who wrote in with this problem. <laughs> so listen to me, lady. I can't help you. <laughs> My only suggestion is do everything. <laughs> Go on That's swing. your suggestion? <laughs> yeah. Try One more swing. time. <laughs> Try do everything. <laughs> Damn them threesomes. Start swinging. Swinging don't work for you. Try polygamy. Ooh. That don't work for me. Try, try, uh, 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 what they call it? What's that TV? Show? Sister wives. Get some <laughs> sister wives up in there. Uh, do what old pimps do. Get you a couple wife in laws. Uh, you know, and then if that ain't enough for you, you know, just try prostitution. I don't know what <gasps> to tell you. Try prostitution. Oh, no. What are y'all? Why is the shock? <laughs> We're she doing kidding. all this for free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she doing anybody and everybody for free. <laughs> she threesomes. She ready to swing. <laughs> they gonna do polygamy. Mm-hmm. They gonna do sister wives. They gonna be on TV in a minute. Mm-hmm. All this it's crazy. That's like that show that's on TV that's got that black lady that's got them three husbands. Husbands. Mm-hmm. And, and they all stay in the same house. Who? who yeah. What? Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. let me explain something to you. <laughs> well, they do that. When I take my <laughs> clothes off. Okay. There can be only one person in this room that has a zipper on their pants. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Can't nobody else stay here. Ain't nobody got no bed over there nowhere. <laughs> I got to be out. So, Leave no, I comments. can't help this lady. On today's Strawberry Letter. (laughs) On Instagram at Steve Harvey FM. Check us out on the Strawberry Letter podcast. to be top. On the free iHeartRadio app, uh, where free never sounded so good. Coming up next, it is Junior with Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, Shirley, let me tell you about the Cures Hope 5K Run and Fun Walk. Got an update on the registration yesterday. Uh, we are up to 235 people Go for ahead, uh, June 1st. So y'all need to see y'all wow. in Dallas at the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge. Come on out there, man. Register. Go to kiershope.org. That's K-I-E-R-S hope.org. We're working to change the shape of sickle cell. That's what we're doing. So I'll see y'all June 1st. All right, um, the uh, 2024 NFL schedule is out. And, man, week one. Y'all got a game week one. The Dallas Cowboys. Cleveland Browns going down to Dallas. Tommy Houston. We, we playing Dallas, too, man, on Monday Night Football. Week Already 12. Know. Yeah, we'll man. There. We're going to have to be fact, there, dog, for that one. Matter of fact, let's put in the be off on Tuesday. Let's go ahead and put it in. <laughs> <laughs> Plan ahead, huh? I'm not going to do that, Tommy, but uh, <laughs> what? I'm just he saying we're going to watch the game is what I'm saying. Uh, also, man, they do have a Super Bowl rematch. The Kansas City Chiefs will take on the San Francisco 49ers in week nine of the NFL uh, 2024. Pittsburgh Steelers. Russell Wilson is going back to Denver. He going back to the Denver Broncos. What? Pittsburgh. Yeah, man. Going back down there showing why y'all let me go. <laughs> it's going to be a bunch of these games, man. Why are he going back? He going back down there. Pittsburgh Steelers playing the, the Denver Broncos. He going to go back and show him. He shouldn't have let me go. So, we got that. Also, man, shout out to Bronny James. He was cleared to play in the NBA by the doctors. Mm-hmm. He can play in the NBA and be drafted. You know one thing he did say, Unc, that he going to the NBA. He does not want to make it off his dad's name. He want it on his own, man. He said, I want to make it make on it my own. He off his dad's name. You got to go out here and play. Yeah. Nobody care who boy you is. He going to play. He can ball. Mm-hmm. He going to go yeah. out here. He going to do it. I'm you ain't got to worry about it. Make, make, anybody, you ain't finna make it on your daddy name in the NBA. No, they don't. They don't care who your daddy is. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> you still got to play the game. Right? You gonna have yeah, to I'm gonna go on feed you this thirty. <laughs> you gonna, you gonna drink it, <laughs> and, and and we gonna go from here. 
That's, that's <laughs> all it is. That's all it is, man. And uh, shout out, man, to Paul Pierce, man. Did anybody see Paul Pierce on other street the other day? I Come saw, on, Paul Pierce. I saw Paul that. Pierce said the N word live on TV and didn't stop. <laughs> didn't even catch no. himself. <laughs> so committed. No. <laughs> this N word well, here. Because he was just he was just in it and yeah. wasn't paying no attention. Uh -huh. Wasn't paying no attention. He was. <laughs> I was a shock oh. or a Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I we know laughing. He was looking down, man. Let me show you what this. I guess he did. No, uh huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, he pulled that statue. Man, man, look what it is, dude. Look, we're live. Hello, <laughs> oh, man. My man. <laughs> Game six tonight, Pacers Knicks. Go ahead, Shirley. I'm <laughs> All right, Junior. Thank you. Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll find out who's most likely to do what on this show right here, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time to play a round of who on the show. Who on this show comes to work late the most? Tommy. <laughs> no hesitation. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing this missing. whatever this is today. <laughs> I'm talking about late, missing, no call, don't know where he at. What is I'm a, call, when I call, what I'm supposed to say to you? I don't that know. That I ain't there? I don't know. I ain't well, there. well, we already know that. Exactly. So why but call? It's, it's the, it's, but see, it's expected uh, absences that throw us the most. Mm -hmm. We are, we are able to predict your absence. Yeah, like this is right. his birthday weekend, so what is Monday? An off day for him. Yeah. But your birthday is Saturday, right? So what does that have to do with Monday? Ain't it supposed to be the next day uh, that's closest to, to the week that you get off? That's how no, they do them holidays. That's Sunday. You off on Sunday. You ain't no holiday. <laughs> It's just your birthday, dude. It's just your birthday, baby. You don't, I, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not just a birthday. Not, <laughs> birthday. All right. Who on the well, show? Because, you know, everybody got days now. Now, you know, they have Secretary Day, Boss Day, they have Women's Day, you know. Nephew Day. They start having Little People Day. <laughs> I said Nephew Day is what I said. I didn't say nothing about that. Who on Secretary the show day? would you never take fishing with you? Sure. Uh, who you were going to say me? Shirley, <laughs> Shirley, Monica, not taking Carla. Nowhere, none of that. No women? <laughs> yeah. And, 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 or Junior. Only person not going to say Junior. Junior. Yeah. Junior. What? Yeah. Junior, you didn't take me. I've been out there with uh, you. You get out there and get sick. We can't get you back in, though. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Can't go out like there. You like you sitting up here like you, you don't. You wasn't sick before. Okay. I've been sick before, but I don't know how to, I don't know what to do when you, we way out in the middle of nowhere, boy. <laughs> Who on the show cannot talk without cussing? Who on the show? Steve. Steve? Yeah. I see. This what? is so easy. <laughs> yeah, you. What's that confused what? look on your face? Oh. You the Paul Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of Paul Pierce. <laughs> he, but he talking to Keisha. Hey, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> that is you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Who on the show would not be a good spades partner? Shirley. Uh -huh. oh, Shirley. 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 You can't play spades? No. Oh. <laughs> What? Uh uh. Plus, yeah, oh. you know my attention span. I uh uh. Oh, uh -uh. Uh -uh. you just uh -huh. reneging uh -huh. on the books. <laughs> no. Uh uh. I can't concentrate that hard. Uh uh. uh, -uh. Carla played really well. Yeah, yes. and Tommy too. Yeah. Yes. Her and Marjorie uh -huh. was in my house, Africa. Sure. Wearing them out. Yes, that's my space <laughs> partner right there, Marjorie Harvey. Come Which on, was hot. another N word moment. That was another N word. <laughs> while we was yeah. in Africa. <laughs> But I cleared it up, though, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who on the show had naturally curly hair until recently? Why dun, 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 dun. Here, here, it's all these is easy. Junior. Know, they all easy. Why is y'all what? Y'all naturally curly hair until recently? <laughs> <laughs> Until yeah. recently, though, that's the cold part. Yeah. Just start wearing all these damn baseball hats. <laughs> No, you, you, don't don't even, no, you don't even repeat. <laughs> he got a lot of hats. You got, so many damn hats. you got a jump hat <laughs> on now. 
Who on the yeah, show? Yeah, on I want. <laughs> <laughs> Who on the show would you uh, ask to borrow a car? Oh, that's, Steve. That's over Steve. Steve. Yeah, all day long. Yeah, and, and, Why and, ask him? I mean, he ain't gonna know what's okay, gone. Yeah, yeah, Would you know what's gone on? Yeah, 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 but who ain't gonna let you have the car? That's the question you need to ask. But <laughs> well, we're gonna ask you, though. Yeah. All right, who on the show um, has a child that's taller than they are? Tommy. Ooh, Tommy. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Shout out you to Trey. What up, Trey? This is our last time doing these, y'all. This is our last time. <laughs> Why My baby is taller than me. Sheridan's you way taller than oh, I am. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> what you upset about? Since she oh, shout out to Trey <laughs> and Jordan. <laughs> 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 coming, coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so did you guys see this video of the passenger that crawled into the overhead luggage bin on Southwest? Did you guys see yes. that? I saw yes. it, yeah. Yes. Uh, this was on a flight from Albuquerque to Phoenix. Passengers were boarding the flight, and one passenger happened to look up and saw a lady lying in the overhead head luggage bin uh, leaning on a small piece of luggage now according to online sources southwest is investigating the matter uh what i don't understand why would anyone even want to get up in there what what is that how did she get up in there how did how she, did yeah. you get, how in she get how did she get up in there it's clear that sign she's going through something she going something wrong and i like it go on now just being closed it's full now go on go on down there must be you can't put your bag up here not, not up here no this one this one full go on down <laughs> 17A open. Go down there. That's a, that's a contortionist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. You don't yeah, know what she's going through. That's that weird. was crazy. You saw it, Steve? No, I didn't. Mm-mm. It was scary, then crazy. First, yeah. first, it was frightening. Whoa. Like yeah. that, and then yeah, scary. But, but she yeah. didn't react, though. She didn't react. Go on now. She was cool. Go on down there. Fellas, cool. that's the kind of girl you don't want. Hiding and folded herself up now and hiding all up on the stuff at your house. That's how they do like that. They don't want that. I thought you, you like contortionists. That. It's a double-edged sword, though. They can do too much, too. <laughs> it's a double-jointed edge sword. No, damn well she ain't in my microwave and you're watching me. Not the microwave. Yeah, that was scary. All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather Showtime at the Apollo or the Steve Harvey Show? Which one? Hmm. Where the what? Watch it, you mean? Yeah, but you just rather... Steve Harvey yeah. Show. Steve Harvey Show. Steve Harvey, more than favorite. Showtime? You're mm-hmm. talking about the sitcom, Steve Harvey Show? I'm talking show? about the sitcom. Yes, oh, the, sitcom, the sitcom, Steve Harvey. Yeah. Show. When he was Mr. Hightower. Yes, yeah. I love that show. Uh huh. Oh, I love that. Steve, show. We're, <laughs> which we're one? Bullethead and 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 Romeo oh, boy. Oh. Levita Alize mm, Jenkins. Too much work. <laughs> Come on. Mm-hmm. Too much work. I don't want to be on set that long no more. I do the Apollo in the heartbeat. Okay, so you'd rather the Apollo? Uh huh. Oh. Ain't nothing like a good boo though. Ooh, they used Man, to <laughs> <laughs> my rub that rub that stump. <laughs> All right. Would you rather lick cake? Icing off your fingers, or would you rather use Watch a napkin? Yourself. Hey Shirley, Shirley, when you say Man, you got to speed that up, to, you, you got to yeah, push it together. You left too much space in between. Would you rather lick cake, cake icing off your fingers, hey, hey. or would you rather use a napkin? Just listen to uh, what I said. My how fingers I said or somebody else's fingers? Off you your fingers. I'm like the oh, lady in the icing frame off now. your finger, or do what? Or use a napkin. Mm-hmm. I'll do that. I ain't no different. I just why would we waste all that ice? Yeah, I just do it off the fingers. That's it. <laughs> okay, so you're licking the cake. You're licking the icing off your fingers. Okay. Uh-huh. Why do you guys God, make this so that? hard? Uh, would you rather live with this entire morning show crew, or would you, or would you rather Please. compliment your ex? <laughs> oh Lord, not nah, not nah, Tommy, <laughs> nah, not her. <laughs> All right, I'm with the morning crew. Who got the bathroom first? Uh, <laughs> Junior. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to be with y'all. I'm not. Uh-uh. Or compliment your ex. 
Or just mm-hmm. compliment your ex. Yes. What? No, I'm going to compliment my ex. I'm not living with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, huh? You can live with You didn't, you didn't lie no to her before, you, huh, dog? <laughs> Hell yeah. We're not rich Hell enough yeah. for you. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just, it ain't, and we're not finna do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Would you rather be very cute, but you're an introvert, or would you be very, rather be very ugly and confident? <laughs> Oh, I'm going to be all day. I'd rather be that. I'm already know how to do that. I'm good. I'm not Confident ugly. but ugly. You. I'm not going to be ugly with y'all, man. Tommy. I'm, I'm, I'm boy. Tommy. I know. I'm cute. Come on, man. It's like, come, come on, on man. Come on, man. Let's just go on in there. Come on. You <laughs> pick yourself. You're not, tired I'm of the not, denial. Not, 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 <laughs> I, hey, man, we provide opportunity after opportunity after yes. opportunity. Yes. <laughs> you just come on. You, you need to come on out. But it's his I'm birthday, not Steve. Be. I'm it's his birthday. Let y'all. him be cute on his birthday. Wait, 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 Shirley. So what am I when I when it ain't my birthday, Shirley? Go ahead. What, what is so because on Monday after Ooh, your birthday, you do the math. <laughs> if they gonna let you be cute on your birthday, what did that say about them other three hundred sixty four days? <laughs> That's today's round of Would You Rather. Ass missed another opportunity. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll close out the show with the one and only Steve Harvey. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are. Last break of the day on this Friday. It's been a good day. Good Friday. Yeah. Hey, you know what I was thinking about closing remarks? I'm going to give people some encouragement here. I want to give people a, a solid piece of advice. Because we live in this world of social media, likes, uh, hearts, uh, comments, views, clicks. This is the world we're in. For so many people. But can I tell you something, man? You know, I was watching Denzel on Instagram the other day, and he said, you know, you should get off Instagram. Turn it off for two weeks. See what you do. Because a lot of people who are addicted to it. My social media feed comes across a bit different, I will admit, because all I watch mostly is sports, and I watch mostly motivational stuff. So that your algorithms, they feed you what you have a propensity to. So if I press my search block, that little micro, that little magnifying glass search block, most of the stuff I pick up, you see some frat stuff come up, you see some a lot of track and field, boxing, all this here, and mostly motivational stuff. And even if I'm scrolling through, a lot of motivational stuff comes up. But I, that's what my stuff really tends to. But let me tell you something: for those of you that are handling it the other way that are paying attention to these clicks, likes, comments. Let me tell you something. Don't, don't let this stuff direct your life because this new, this, this, new, this new platform called social media is the devil's playground. Don't let this stuff affect your life. Stop reading these comments. These people don't really know you. These people are not your friends. The majority of these people that's trolling, they are not pulling for you. There are people who wake up whose job is to hate. The devil has imps working for him 24-7. And if you want to locate them, they online. I don't care if you post a picture of a beautiful newborn baby. Go through them, call, go through them comments. Somebody got something to say. Evil or nasty about this baby. I don't care what you post, man. You can talk about God's favor in your life. Somebody got something to say about that. Listen to me. Do not allow this to change who you are. Stop letting people who don't know you define you. Stop letting people who don't care about you make, make, make statements that affect how you can feel about yourself. I am telling you, man, I've been done with that. You can say what you want to say about me. I don't care. Now, am I human? Yes. Sometimes when stuff come to me, I go, wait a minute, man, what? I don't even know this dude. I don't even know this girl. These, these people don't know my family. And then I have to catch myself. You're exactly right, Steve. They don't know you. They don't know your family. So why are you letting this bother? Man, go on about your business. I don't, I've stopped giving my light to dark people. If you are a dark person, 
I don't I don't quit giving you my light. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but there are people who are trapped in darkness. Every word out of their mouth, they dog. Every performance you see them give is dog. Every post is dog. It's always somebody else's fault. It ain't ever what they did. Oh, woe is me. They did this to me. You can't keep that narrative up year after year after year after year. When are you going to let that go? So how you letting that person in your day? Are you serious? I watch people do it to themselves. You know, my father used to tell me all the time, he says, Steve, when you're listening to people, listen to everybody. Listen to everybody. Even when a fool is talking, pay close attention. Because it ain't that you need to know what he know. You need to listen to a fool because a fool will tell you exactly what not to do. And knowing what not to do is as, as important as knowing what to do. So, see, I watch and I look at people who do things to themselves. Every time you see them, man, there's some negativity coming out their mouth. And then all you got to do is look at their life. The results will manifest itself in the things that come out of your mouth. Your life will manifest itself at the, at the stuff you drink and put into your body, your spirit, your mind, your heart, your soul. It will manifest itself. And no matter how truthful or how smooth a person is online telling that lie, all you got to do is look at their life. People who are going somewhere and heading somewhere, they don't have time for that. They don't have time for it at all. And if you see a person making time for that type of stuff constantly, all you got to do is look at their life. Trust me. And it ain't the life you're going to want. It is not the life you are after. Stop allowing people who don't know you or care about you shape your thoughts about yourself. Start taking on the attitude if they don't know you. You know what? You know what? You're really important to me. If you don't have my cell phone number, I don't really care what you think. I really don't. If you don't have my cell number, I really don't care what you think. If you live your life like that, you'll be in much better shape. Have a great day today. Mold and shape yourself with God. Think about what God has for you. Think of how God feels about you and take it from there. Quit worrying about these haters out here because they only got one job, and that's to hate, and they work for the devil. His job is to rob you of your destiny. Those are my closing remarks today. I know it was a little bit all over the place, but I meant every word I said. Y'all have a great day. Talk to God. He would absolutely love to hear from you today. Thank you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 